Hello again and welcome to another Morning Mondays. This is episode 59. So this week, guys, I've been working on another infantry squad for 3rd Platoon. We have completed 5 out of 6. There's a reason I'm hesitating. We'll get into that a little bit later in the video. But I've completed my 5th infantry squad for 3rd Platoon. Uh, another auto cannon, melter gun, and vox caster squad. Uh, just I've got and I've got one more of those to do, and then I will have completed all six infantry squads for third platoon. So it's going pretty well. Um, like I said, not much to report simply because I've done one of these already, guys, and it's very very similar loadout. Um, the only sort of you sort of model of note, shall we say? In this squad, you know, outside of, of course, you know, the classic Mordian Melter Gun, which I, I've so many, I've never bought a blister pack, and I must have five or six of those Melter Guns because I always, whenever I seem to pick them, uh, pick up a bunch of guard off eBay for, you know, like an eBay rescue, they always seem to have one of these Melter Guns, and I, I suspect that people keep the plasma guns for some reason or other, or they sell the plasma guns separately because plasma is so, like, valuable, or, or, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I always seem to have loads of these melters. Actually, there's another reason, which I'll get into why. Another reason why I think it is. And it's to do with this Voxcaster guy. You see, the, the model of note I was talking about is this unique Voxcaster guy. You see, he is from the Metal Mord, uh, Metal Cadian uh, uh, Command Squad. Did I say Metal Mordian Melter Gunner? I, if I did, I said I meant Metal Cadian Melter Gunner, of course, guys. But the Voxcaster guy is from the old, now out of production, Cadian Command Squad box that was released with the 4th um, edition codex. And yeah, it, I, it's a really cool model, very, you know, very unique. They don't, they don't make one like this now. Um, and this model was, I believe, only available through the, through the Command Squad box. So it's really, really cool. A bit like there's the old, uh, you know, my favourite Imperial Guard officer model, the guy with the bionic eye and the sword, and it, it's really, really cool. Uh, which I'm actually got one of those paint, uh, paint or half painted up, so that'll be coming next week. But this old Voxcaster guy, really interesting. So obviously there's some sort of unique things on the model. He's got, um, you know, he's got binoculars and he's got like a scanner thing. Um, and the way he's holding his las gun is pretty, pretty unique. Um, but what's actually really interesting. What I didn't really realise until, you know, actually having this model in my hands and painting it, is it is actually quite different to the plastic Cadian uh, Voxcaster. Okay, now, uh, foolishly, I didn't take a picture of these side by side, but if you have one of these plastic Cadian Voxcasters, you'll be able to sort of, you know, you'll be able to compare the model to, to one of those. And you, so you can see, like, the speaker horn on the side, it doesn't have the cable that comes out. It's just got the metal connector bit, essentially. So that's one thing. Um, and the details on the back, where there's only three buttons on the back, right, you know, um, rather than four. Uh, and the way, the way the dials and the knobs and everything, are, it's, it's just very different. And the size of the aerials is different as well. On the plastic Cajun one, it has the big metal ring, it has the big aerial, and it's got a very small stumpy aerial. But on this Voxcaster, you've actually got two big aerials and you've got a really big metal ring. Really, really, really big sort of um, sort of ring aerial. So, yeah, it's 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 interesting. Now, I wonder if, and I don't know this, guys, but I, my, my, I wonder if there's two, there could be two possible explanations for this. One, this was a, an earlier sculpt of the new, I'm saying obviously new in, you know, sort of inverted commas, new uh, Cadian models in comparison to the original ones and this was an earlier sculpt of that Vox Castle when it came to doing the plastic one they redesigned it slightly the other explanation could be that it's meant to represent a master Vox so back in the old guard codices there used to be two different types of Vox caster you used to have the um, normal vox cast that went in the squads and then you used to have the master vox which linked to all other vox casters because normally with regular vox casters only one could talk to another one but the master vox could talk to all of them at the same time and the rules mechanic around this was you could project your officer's leadership and they typically had much higher leadership than the guardsmen you could project it down the vox caster that's what the vox caster was for there were no orders imagine imperial guard with no order system right there was no orders and 
the way and, and commissars allowed you to re-roll leadership, but officers allowed you to use their leadership down the vox cast. So you didn't even need to have them in the same squad. So it's really, you know, quite a good little mechanic. And if your command squad, don't forget your officer was part of a command squad. He wasn't a, an independent character like he is now. Um, if your command squad had a normal vox cast, which was much cheaper, it's like five points, then you could give your leadership to one squad that turn. Okay. But if you had the master vox, you could give the leadership bonus to every squad in the army that had a vox caster as well. And it was across the whole battlefield. There's no range limitations. So that's that's kind of cool. And I think that maybe this vox caster, this comlink, is, is the master vox caster. Master vox. And that's why it looks a bit different. That's what I'd like to think anyway. I'm obviously just going to be using it as a regular vox caster. And it is another classic metal mini. I like to do with these regular old Caden squads. I know they're getting a bit of a head swap, but you know, head swaps are kind of par for the course for a Caden army now. I mean, I'm actually surprised now when I see Caden armies that haven't done a head swap. You know, everyone does a head swap these days, just the way it is. Um, but I like to, you know, so I don't really count the head swaps as doing anything too special with the models, just for me personally. Um, I mean, it is, actually, I think I'm, I'm dumbing down. I think I'm simplifying the effort that myself and other people put in. I think, you know, I'm being a bit harsh on myself. But anyway, the point is, what I'm trying to say without insulting everyone and myself is that I think um, what I like to try and do with these Cajun squads is to add in a classic sort of out of the box model. I say out of the box, I mean like out of the, you know, not a normal, a, a, a special model in each squad. So it might just be one of the last chance models. It might just be uh, a Cadian metal melter gunner, or it might be a classic sergeant or it might you know there's always something i try and do with them or, or in this case it's that's it's a special vox cast so i just like to sprinkle those models throughout because it may it breaks up the squad looking too similar because even with the heads of the models can look very very samey so i like to try and put a lot of effort into making each squad feel unique so with these heavy weapon teams that i've been doing recently you can notice I've been making sure to use different shoulder pads. And I forgot to mention this last week. So the reason I've done those shoulder pads, I haven't, sh I haven't cut off the ones that come with the heavy weapon kit. I actually, a lot of the, a lot of these models, those of you that know what's been happening with the platoon, these were some of the roughest models that I've had to restore. A lot of the heavy weapon team models, their arms were just all, they were irredeemable. I couldn't fix them. So what I've done is I've got a huge bits box, and what I've done is I've taken the uh, from the Torox kit and from the Chimera kit. You've got the arms for people to operate the heavy stubber or the storm bolter, and they are the, they look very. In this case, it's the it's the, the it's the Torox kit actually, and it's to, and it's the Torox Prime storm bolter operator arms. And that's why you could, I haven't actually done the detail on here yet, but if you actually look closely at the heavy weapon, the, the arms, the, the, and those arms don't come with shoulder pads. So I've taken the shoulder pads from the Chimera kit and put them on the Torox kit arms and used those on the heavy weapon gunner. So whilst that looks to the casual observer, oh, that's just, uh, you know, that's just a, a normal heavy weapon gunner, right? Actually, that heavy weapon gunner has got bits from the Scion, he's got a Scion head, Scion, a, a regular Scion head, that's one kit, then he's got the Heavy Weapon Team kit, that's a, that's second kit, it's a Heavy Weapon Team body and legs, then he's got the arms from the Torx Prime kit, the shoulder pads from the Chimera kit, and um, this backpack from Anvil Industries. So there's actually five kits which have gone into that one heavy weapon gunner. Um, and then his mate, as, as you know, he's very similar, but he's got a Scion head and he's also got uh, an Anvil Industry backpack and he's from the heavy weapon team and his arms are from the regular Cadian kit. So that's four kits. So I think this is something that I don't, you know, I don't want to break my arm jerking myself off. <laughs> but I think this is something I don't, I don't, really you know i shouldn't really say that i'm not trying to boast i'm trying to show what you can do 
yeah, that wouldn't know how to boast it. My life depended on it. The men with guns came. I'd just be like, just kill me. I can't. I can't. I can't boast. But if the but um, but what I'm trying to show is if you make sure you're saving all your bits, guys. Make sure you're saving all your bits from your different bits boxes. Uh, I've used Space Marine bits. I've used Scion. I've used bits from all over. Loads and loads of different kits, and it makes a huge difference because it just means that the models. You know, you're able to make them look really, really distinctive. A head swap is absolutely fine. A head swap will get you 90% of the way there, but if you want to get the next 10%, you want to be adding, you know, uh, knife. Not you don't want to have just the standard, you know, Imperial Guard knives and webbing and stuff like that. You want, you know, have some Scion knives, some Space Green ammo pouches, and all, where do you get the ore spec? You know, you get an ore spec from somewhere. You just want to mix things up. In fact, the sergeant for this squad, he he has a beret head. That's a swapped head, but his beret head isn't from the regular Scion kit. If you look at it closely, it's actually the berry head again from the Torox kit, Torox Prime kit. You see, it's got a little his uh, his bionic eyes on a different side to what it normally is, and his earpiece. He's got he's got like a like a little com like a little com earpiece as well. So there you go, guys. That's um, that's actually uh, pretty much it for this week. The one last thing I would say is big. I'm gonna keep it nice and short and sweet this week. Um, the one bit I'm not super happy on is I feel the hazard stripes were a bit rough in this unit, but I've done so many of them that I'm hoping that they won't show up. What I would say is I've actually, I have got out all of the models that I've got left to do in the Great Morden Restoration Project. And I have about, I've done approximately, well this is, this is my 270th model, so we'll say about, I've done about 300, okay, for easy rounding and i've only got about 450 infantry in total so i'm actually really i'm quite close with when therapy will be finished which will be the end of this month i will have i'll be two thirds of the way through the project i'll only have two platoons left over to do that's actually pretty incredible so the plan is guys the fact we're sort of it on the final push okay so the plan is i'm going to finish third platoon off then we will have a full metal mordian classic platoon that needs to be done then the final platoon because i've been painting plastic cadians pretty much non-stop for 12 months i did a lot of metal mordians at the beginning and i've just been doing all the conversion stuff so I'm going to go back to painting to what I love and painting up some classic metal Mordians. And then I've got one platoon of Cadians left. But the thing is, I don't even have a full platoon of Cadians left. I actually only have like a couple of squads. Um, but what I do have is uh, lots and lots of special weapons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and add a special weapon team to each platoon because that's actually one thing that's missing from the classic platoon structure is a is a metal is a is a special weapon team i've got the heavy weapon team i've got the command squad i've got the infantry i've got veterans i've got auxilia but i haven't got a special weapon squad so i'm going to go back and add a special weapon squad to everyone so i'll have five of each i'll have five um special weapon squads yeah so that is so it but what I mean, so but you said Morning Glory had a, you had two platoons left to do, but you said you've only got two Cadence squads left. Well, this is something that I wanted to say at the beginning of the video. I hesitated and went, well, you know, five out of maybe six squads for the platoon. So I, I've actually made a bit of a mistake here, guys. So, you know, and I have to admit, someone who's played Gar for a really long time, it's amazing how quickly you, you, you can forget things in the past. I always thought that Gar platoons could take six infantry squads. And the reason I thought that is because in 8th edition with battalions, I've been taking six infantry squads per battalion for the last three years. So it's just been made sense to me, right? Platoon equals six infantry squads. But actually, if we're being true to the fluff here, sticking to the old sticking to the the old platoon layout, they only took five. You took a command squad and two to five infantry squads. And someone pointed this out in one of the comments, and I can't remember if it was on my video or the Winter's SEO video, but someone pointed this out. So actually, if we go back uh, and I trim the platoons down to five squads per platoon rather than six squads, 
that will make up that will make up the remaining squads that I need for fifth platoon. So that might be actually the way to do it. I mean, I'm not gonna. What I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna paint everything up and, and sort sort of do the organization as I go. If it needs to change slightly, then I will do. But yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Now, so I've only got two platoons left after this one. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, and then after that, I have to decide. Really, I have. Um, I actually have the Scions as well, the Assault Corps, which was a special platoon for uh, for the Mordians that I came up with when I was going to run them as Death Corps Creed Grenadiers. Can't do that now, unfortunately. But I still actually want to paint all my Scions up and, and use them as the as the fluffy Assault Corps because it's a full it's a full platoon of the old school metal stormtroopers with some old school Kazakhin leading it. So I really I obviously want to get that all painted up, you know, for sure. So actually, what I'm thinking, of, what I'm what I'm thinking is there will be, uh, there will be six platoons in the Mordian rifles. But I'm saying I've got, you know, I'm saying there's five regular platoons in the Mordian rifles, and then there's this sixth special platoon. I obviously I am going to get them painted, but then I've also got my vehicles as well. But what I'm thinking, guys, is I want to. Um, I want to have a full regiment of guard. I want a full regiment of them. And that is like a lot of guys. So how I'm just wondering how I'm going to do it. Because when I've been looking into my, into my organization, like a regiment is made up of companies and companies are made up of platoons. And well, it, goes, it goes squad, platoon, company, battalion, regiment. But I don't know if it's true in all armies, but in sort of Commonwealth armies and in the British army, you can have a regiment that's made up of a single battalion. So... I'm thinking I want three companies of men. And because that typically you'd have three companies for one regiment. You can have one regiment that makes up one but three companies for one battalion and one battalion that can make up a regiment. So I'm kind of just in, I'm just gonna wonder how to do it, but I want to have a full regiment of guys. Now does that mean I if I I could cheat and not take full strength platoons and trim the platoons down so there's only like three squads in each platoon. Which is actually what they do in the guard codex and the Cajun organization and the guard organization. So, or do I actually repaint all the Mordians, complete the Great Mordian Restoration Project, and then launch some kind of Great Mordian Expansion Project? And let's say I get like 450 guard done. But do I need to push for more? Do I need to push to have three proper companies organized I don't know I honestly I don't know guys but uh it's definitely food for thought maybe I'm just maybe I'm just a masochist maybe I just love painting guards so much that I just keep yeah who knows anyway guys let me know what you think down in the comment section below hope you guys have enjoyed this video please leave lots and lots of comments I do read them all I tried to get back to as many as possible uh, uh, but I don't get back to all of them, but I do read every single one. So thank you for watching, and of course, I'll see you guys next time.